Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Saturday said history was being made at the Swiss-hosted conference that aims to discuss steps toward peace in Ukraine. I believe that we will witness history being made here at the summit. May a just peace be established as soon as possible, Zelensky said in a statement to reporters alongside his Swiss counterpart Viola Amherd at the outset of the peace summit. Today is the day of our common success, when we were all able to give diplomacy a chance. Ukraine never wanted this war. The only one who wanted it was Putin. We have managed to unite 101 countries and international organizations in Switzerland as of now, Zelensky said. Among noteworthy moments in the summit was Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau chanting, Slava to Ukraine, slogan, meaning glory to Ukraine. On the sidelines of the peace summit today, Zelensky held talks with the heads of Switzerland, Georgia, Chile, and met with U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris and Patriarch Bartholomew. During the meeting with Zelensky, Kamala Harris announced a $1.5 billion in aid for Ukraine's energy sector and its humanitarian situation amid its ongoing war with Russia. This war remains an utter failure for Vladimir Putin, Harris said during a bilateral meeting with Zelensky. Russia has refused to attend the summit, with Russian embassy to UK describing it as a platform for promoting the Kiev regime's peace formula. As the summit begun, Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz slammed the ceasefire terms laid out by Vladimir Putin earlier, while the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak accused the Russian president of spinning a phony narrative about his willingness to negotiate. The two-day summit hosted by Swiss government brings together over 50 heads of state and government and 100 delegations, including European bodies and the United Nations in a resort overlooking Lake Lucerne. This time Russia can apply the Ukrainian scenario in Armenia. Armenia's withdrawal from the Collective Security Treaty Organization CSTO is only a matter of time. Experts interviewed by Izvesha Media outlet no longer doubt that Nikol Pashinyan's government will do this after the Armenian premier said during a dispute at a parliament meeting on June the 12th that Yerevan will leave the CSTO when it sees fit. Yerevan de facto suspended its activity within the Russian-led bloc in February when it said it had frozen its participation in it, and Armenia stopped making financial contributions to the alliance in early May. Despite this, CSTO Secretary General Imangali Tasmagambetov said the organization fully sticks to its commitments to Yerevan. Moscow sees Western pressure behind the harsh rhetoric toward the CSTO and Russia. The West is trying its best to integrate Armenia into its confrontation with Russia without any regard for Armenia's security or the interests of the Armenian people, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Galuzin told Izvesha recently. Armenia will undoubtedly quit the CSTO as the Republic has clearly shifted toward the West and pro-Western agencies politically, experts say. The only question now is when this will happen. Everybody has already taken the scenario of Armenia's exit into account and everybody is preparing for that. And that will be Armenia's, not the CSTO's initiative. The CSTO for one did everything to take Yerevan's interests into account, senior research fellow at the Center for Studies of Caucasus at MGIMO University, Nikolai Sileyev concurs. It seems the Pashinyan administration will have the final say on this. Negotiations continue and the Prime Minister is trying to score a political victory, says Sileyev. Still, getting out of the CSTO may not be easy for Yerevan. However, at present, Armenia cannot make the jump to another organization due to the country hosting a Russian military base and Russian border guards, as well as Armenians having certain visa advantages, head of the Caucasus sector of IMEMO RAS, Vadim Mukhanov told Izvesha. The Armenian leadership continues the trend of distancing the country from the CSTO and Russia, said Stanislav Prichin of the Russian Academy of Sciences Primakov Institute of World Economy and International Relations. The de facto political decision has already been made, obviously, but has not yet been institutionalized, the experts stated. That said, 
Pritchin thinks that Yerevan is still considering the consequences and Moscow's reaction. Experts say that Armenia's policy of hostility towards Russia does not exclude the repetition of the Ukrainian scenario in this Caucasian country.